Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video. And today we have our unboxing and first look review at the brand new Lenovo Slim Pro 7 or outside North America, the Yoga Pro 7. So it gets a little confusing. So for purposes of this video, let's just call it the Slim Pro 7. But again, just remember outside the US or outside of Canada as well, you're going to call it the Yoga Pro 7. So with that out of the way, let's get right to it. And what we have here today is a really nice thin and light laptop but what it brings to the table is a good cpu the amd ryzen 7 7735hs paired with a discrete gpu that's right this has a discrete gpu the nvidia geforce rtx 3050 to help out with some of the graphics performance we'll get into the numbers and everything a little bit today as well as the upcoming full review it has a 14.5 inch display it's an ips display it's really nice with a 2.5k resolution and a 90 hertz refresh rate and it is also a touch screen so looking forward to checking that out hey everybody it's andrew and this is my unboxing and first look review at the lenovo slim pro 7 all new for 2023 coming up now before we get to the unit itself i just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure i'm not being paid by lenovo i'm not being sponsored by lenovo all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, this comes in at $1,199.99 over at Best Buy. And to me, that is a really good price considering you're getting a 14-inch, 90 hertz, 14.5-inch touch display, Ryzen 7 7735HS with a discrete GPU, the GeForce RTX 3050 from NVIDIA, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. For those interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link to the Best Buy in the description below and again this i think is a good price for what you're getting and with the specs and pricing out of the way let's find out what you get inside the box all right so we're going to take a look at the charger here so we have a 140 watt power charger you can see it here as it comes into focus not too bad a nice, nice wattage here again it has a discrete gpu the 3050 and this has a usb type c plug so looking good there and again you get your standard power cord and good to see that it is a us plug i can confirm that unlike what we got with the asus packaging it actually looks pretty good and you get the unit itself now this is going to be the storm gray finish let's get the get some documentation here and some warranty information i think that's about it so pretty standard stuff And here it is. So this is a pretty nice looking device. We've seen it before. Very, very understated, but very, very nice looking. As you can see here, it is a beautiful design to me. Sort of rounded corners here, nice and thin. It's an all metal design. It's aluminum or aluminum, and it looks pretty good. So you can see it here. Let's see if we can open it with one finger. We certainly can. Get some more documentation. You've got the smart key function M enables or disables the touchpad switches among the different performances is function plus Q function R sw switches the refresh rate. Of course, this can go up to 90 Hertz. And then of course, function in the space bar turns on, on and controls the keyboard backlight. And here you can see the keyboard. And I always like these keys. They are smile shaped keys. Looks good. Looks good. 86% already charged. So I think they've already set it up for me. Hopefully we don't have to go through the whole setup process. Pretty nice. You're looking at AMD Ryzen 7000 sticker there, AMD Radeon graphics, in addition to having, of course, the RTX 3050. So you can see it here. Uh, this is a really nice design. You got two speaker grills over here. It's got Dolby Atmos. What more can you say? I mean, it's looking good so far. It's not that heavy, but it's not that light either. Again, it has a discrete GPU. The exact weight, it is going to be 1.59 kilograms or 3.5 five pounds so there you have it 
Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side where you get an HDMI 2.1 port that allows you to connect to a monitor 4K 60 hertz. That is always good to see. Next to that is a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 full function. And next to that is a USB 4 port that allows you to connect to Thunderbolt docks. I was able to connect to my external SSD, which is only connecting to Thunderbolt type of devices. And it worked perfectly fine with this unit. So that is USB 4, giving a lot of that Thunderbolt functionality we like to see, 40 gigabits per second. Moving over to the right side is your kill switch for the webcam. Always good to see that. You get your power button. Next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And finally, rounding it out is a USB-A port. Notably missing, there's no micro SD card reader or SD card reader for that matter, which is a little bit of a miss, especially for the content creator. Not a big deal. You could always get a dongle, but would have been nice to include a micro SD card reader at the least. But with that notable exception, it really is a decent port selection at the end of the day. Now, as far as the build is concerned, we're looking at an all metal design. It's aluminum. I see very little flex, if any, in the chassis. So far, the build looking a okay now as far as the finish we're looking at storm gray that's something we've seen before i like the storm gray finish it's not showing too many fingerprints so far that's a big plus and it's pretty thin and light to carry with you especially considering this does have a discrete gpu so it packs a nice little punch under the hood and you will be able to take it with you on the go that's pretty good now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger, and that's certainly aided by that reverse notch, which gives you a little bit of a handle to open it up. Certainly helps out. Now, as far as the hinges are concerned, they're on pretty good. I noticed a little screen wobble when I'm typing, but nothing to be concerned about. And the display goes back 180 degrees, so you always get the perfect viewing angle each and every time. So that's been pretty good. Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, so far looking really good. Tactility, key travel, all feel really good. Smile-shaped keys we've seen before from Lenovo. Really comfortable so far for typing long documents, emails. This has been really good. Tactility has been really good, as I mentioned, and the feedback has been good. So I'm really happy with that. It does have a really nice multi-stage backlight. It has an auto setting for that backlight, or you can put it all the way up, as you see here. Really good, seeing the contrast allowing you to get work done in the dark room or a dimly lit environment that you might find yourself in. So far, so good. Now, as far as the touchpad, the responsiveness when it comes to scrolling, the gestures, everything's working good so far. And now it's not a haptic touchpad. It's a diving board style touchpad. But again, pretty responsive, nicely sized and working well so far. Now, I opened up this laptop in my live unboxing. If you didn't catch it, I'll leave a link to the replay in the description below. But what you have to know about this, of course, is the fact that it does have upgradable SSD here, slotted in M.2 NVMe. And as you can see from these excellent reads and writes, Gen 4 speeds we certainly like to see here in 2023. The Wi-Fi card is also slotted in. That means you can upgrade that if you want to as well. Wi-Fi 6E is working well. Bluetooth 5.1. And they can, again, the card's been working very well. No issue in either Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. And of course, the RAM is unfortunately soldered into the motherboard. That is not upgradable by the user. It is DDR5 RAM and it is running in dual channel mode. My review unit has 16 gigabytes of that DDR5 RAM. Okay, let's talk about the display, and it's a good one. It's a 14.5-inch IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. And yes, for those wondering, that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It also has a refresh rate up to 90 hertz, which will give that really smooth gameplay, the really smooth performance, the very fluid experience. Having a higher refresh rate, though, does mean you're going to use up some more battery life, although battery life is a definite strong suit so far I'll bring you that number in the upcoming full review. Of course, I didn't have it long enough to give you any final conclusions, but again, battery life is looking good. We'll talk more about it soon. But as far as this display, it is a glossy display, so you will notice some glare and reflection depending on your lighting conditions, of course. And it is a touchscreen display, and I thought the touch layer was very responsive. Navigating through the OS with your finger has been a nice, convenient thing to have on it, a nice feature to have, although not necessary, but I like having it nonetheless.
Now, as far as screen brightness is concerned, they're claiming 350 nits. I'm seeing a little bit below that, but not much. I'll bring you those numbers as far as the color gamut, as far as the color accuracy, which is looking good. So everything is looking good as far as this display is concerned. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been good so far. A lot more to test, but so far, this display is looking really good. So this is the camera on the Lenovo Slim Pro 7 here for 2023 outside North America, the Yoga Pro 7. Again, 2023, got a full HD camera here, 1080p, 30 frames per second. It's an IR camera that allows you to log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. There is no fingerprint scanner here, so you'll have to use the camera or type in a password or passcode. Now, as far as the video quality, what do you think about it? What do you think about the audio quality of the array mics? Let me know in the comment section below. I didn't see any of the studio effects that you get on a lot of the other laptops. I'm not sure if in this price point they wanted to include that. I'm not really sure. But what do you think about this as far as using it for Zoom, as far as work from home, and on your hybrid work needs and all that stuff, uh, let me know in the comments section below. Now, as far as the CPU is concerned, we're looking at the AMD Ryzen 7 7735HS, an 8-core, 16-thread processor from AMD, which is based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture. We see that the Zen 3 Plus is a refresh of the Zen 3, and we're not seeing it based on Zen 4, which we expect later this year. So we're not seeing that here, but nonetheless, we're not gonna see a huge increase over what we saw last year as far as this AMD Ryzen 7 processor is concerned. That's not necessarily a bad thing as the performance, as you'll see in the numbers in the initial benchmarks are actually pretty good. Let's take a look at them now. And as you can see from these initial benchmarks, Geekbench 6 single core score 1895 is very good. 8952 is a decent multi-core performance here in 2023, no doubt about it. The open CL score based on the RTX 3050 GPU could be a little bit higher, I think, but that's just me. And of course, we do have a lot more benchmarks to run, so stay tuned. We will give you all that numbers in the upcoming full review. But what's interesting is I didn't get a really high single core score on the Cinebench R23. Ran it a couple of times. Not sure what's going on there. And I didn't detect too much throttling. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that test. I'll investigate more and report my findings in that upcoming full review. And as I mentioned earlier, this has a discrete GPU, and that's pretty nice to have, especially in such a thin and light laptop with a really nice, clean-looking chassis. But of course, don't expect this GPU, the RTX 3050, to blow you away in terms of the graphics performance, making it a great gaming laptop to play AAA titles on their high settings. Now, that's not what this is about. What this will do is enhance a lot of the graphic stuff, say video editing or doing Photoshop, maybe a little bit more complicated, and that that, of course, is where that benefit comes in. But don't expect to do AAA titles on their highest settings. I will bring you some of the numbers. We'll see the thermal performance out of this unit in the upcoming full review. But so far, my initial benchmarks have shown that the graphics are a little bit of a step up over an integrated solution, say the Iris XE you get with an Intel unit, or of course, the integrated solution, the Radeon graphics as you get with AMD. Now, in my initial testing, when it comes to the fan noise, I didn't see it go above 34, 35 decibels in that initial testing. So stay tuned. I'll have more to say on that. And as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, never getting overly hot. A couple of hot spots here and there, but nothing overly concerning so far. Again, I'll bring you more information regarding thermals in the upcoming full review. Now it does have stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos to help with the spatial audio. I'll bring you an audio sample and a sound comparison to the MacBook Pro, which I think is the best in the upcoming full review. But so far, rest assured, it actually is pretty good, filling up a room pretty nicely with the volume, although it could maybe use a little bit more bass. We'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. My initial impression so far of the Lenovo Slim Pro 7 here for 2023, I, I like it. I like it a lot, and that's because you're getting a lot of bang for the buck. For $1,200, you're getting a really nice 14.5-inch IPS touch display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. You get the AMD Ryzen 7 7735HS, which is based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture, not the upcoming Zen 4 we expect later this year. And then, of course, it also has USB 4.0 support, which gives you a lot of that functionality you'd get with, say, a Thunderbolt port on an Intel variant. But here you do get that one USB 
4.0, that actually is pretty good. And I've tested it with docs. I've tested it with a an external Thunderbolt drive, and it all works so far. I got an upgradable SSD and Wi-Fi, of course, and you got HDMI 2.1. So if you want to connect to 4K60, you have no issue. And nice all aluminum design. It's nice and sturdy, nicely built. And of course, we talked about that $1,200 price as configured. I think you're getting a lot for the money. Now, the de negatives here, of course, is the fact that it's going to have soldered RAM. The RTX 3050 is a bit limited when you compare it to other discrete GPU options. Of course, that's going to be because of the thermal considerations of this. And we're seeing less multi-core and single-core performance when you compare it to a 13th gen Intel processor. That's been the normal, of course. We've seen that before, where the AMD chips really shine is going to be efficiency, battery life. And speaking of battery life, my initial testing so far looking really good. I'll bring you the final numbers in the upcoming full review. But so far, this is looking really good. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.